Aí é. é um pequeno. This is the Hepford Farm on DeWitt Road, six miles north of Lansing and two miles south of DeWitt. These are the barns that they looked in about in the early 1940s. So high That's the know. woods out in the back, out to the west. Here we are looking from the south north. The old dirt road's been there for years with no, no nothing done to it. There's the woods out from the, to the west where we used to go squirrel hunting. Look at those beautiful pears in the garden. This one looks like a sugar beet farm out to just southwest of the barns. One of the many crops raised on the farm, along with oats, corn, wheat, beans, hay. Now we're looking uh, for looking at the barns from the north. This is where the I-69 highway is presently. There's the house on the west side of the road. And there's my oldest daughter, Doris. And there's my young kid brother, Don. You can see he was only about eight, 17, 18 years old at that time. There's the, there's the old outhouse. The old something with the uh, Sears Roebuck catalog. The toilet paper. Ah, oh, there's... Uh, that's Don. He just... Uh, Got relieved. He's on the way happy. <laughs> now it's, it's milking time. They're opening the barn door and well, ready to get. Here goes the cows across the road. Uh, from the west side to the east side to be milked. See the dogs right on the job. Very handy, uh, animal around the farm. There's the, there's the old milk house. There's the cats catch the mice. Never bought cat food in those days. They ate mice and milk. There's some of the cows out in the barnyard. It's now milking time. Don's letting them in. You'll notice they're Holstein cows. They're the best milk producers. They all know their place. They go in there and know which, which stanchion to walk into. When you get in there, of course, they lock the stanchion so they can't get out. There's one of the first milking machines of the time. It's on the wheel, but wheelbarrow type. Set the milk can down there and and uh, clean the cows, udders, and milk two cows at a time. There's my dad, Henry Hepford. He didn't trust the milking machines. He had to strip them afterwards to get the last drop of milk available. So he went around with a pail after each after the milking machine each time and got what milk he could. Now, this is the meal time. There's Doris and Harold and my mother. There's Don and my dad. And you'll notice that the old fashioned telephone on the, on the wall was uh, eight or ten on the party line. And the R number was one long and three shorts. So when it rang that way, why well, you hang up and you know, raise the receiver and talk. And then you want to call out while well, you had a heck of a time waiting for the women to get off the line. Well, there's Mrs. Uh, William Kamelt and Mr. William Kamelt lived on Clark Road, great friends of the folks who were visiting in the afternoon. Some of the flowers. There's my uh, younger brother, Ivan and Joyce and Will and Bill. And back there, uh, Ivan was riding the bicycle. He was doing pretty well after his Indopel paralysis attack. There's one of my uncles, Arthur Slee, married my, one of my mother's sisters, and lived in life. And uh, he was short and stubby, but always bothered the women. Up to the north, you see Fred Felsky's farm. And there's the garage to the west side of the house. Oh, there's Carl and Mary Shively. They're coming from the outhouse, too. See how happy they are? That's a popular place, you know. Back in those days, we had an insight. There's Art Slee again, close up. 
There's the horses. That was our that was our power for handling all the farm tools. In a way, from, from one horse to four, uh, hooked up to a piece of equipment. There's the old straw stacks out of the barn. The cows hung around. There's the milk house. There's the tool shed. There's the corn crib. Ah, there's the young calf. He's out after his breakfast. Ah, there's Doris and John. Notice the corn shock of corn. They cut the corn and put it in shocks. Then they go around and husk it in the fall and throw it on the pile. John's decided to take one of those nubbins and those poor ears, put it in his pocket, take it to study. Here's the pile of corn that they throw it on the pile and then they come along with a wagon and sort the good corn in the front and the pole in the back and put it on the corn crib. Now they're gathering walnuts up in the woods, the field just east of the woods. John's very independent. Well, that's Harold. He's very independent. He don't want any help. Well, I guess that's John. That's John and Doris. Harold wasn't around there. Well, Mother's, why don't you decided to help? Whoop, see, she's missing the, the bag. She's not going around there. Well, you see, I had to come in to rescue and help finish the job. That was an enjoyable piece of work. Take all those walnuts back and then we'd put them through the corn shower and get the shucks off and we'd crack them. Now this is a cornfield. Not very clear, but that's what it's supposed to be. That's the old lane that goes down from the road down to the woods. And leads into each of the fields. There's my bed full of egg corn, one row at a time. And we usually put muzzles on the horses, horses, so they wouldn't eat the corn as they went along there. That's a sleepy job after you've been out dating on Sunday night. Boy, those rows all run together. The first thing you know, you're ripping out some corn if you don't pinch yourself and keep awake. There, see, you raise it up when they get there. Raise the teeth up when you get to the end of the row, and then you start another one down, they go again. Then at night, we always had to clean the dirt off in those teeth, get them real sharp, bright and shiny. No tool in the farm ever went away dirty. There's my dad, closing on the cultivator. There's the side delivery rake, the rake the hay and the rows to be picked up by the hay loader. And there was a mowing machine back there you saw. And here's the hay loader that picks it up after it's mowed and loads and, and puts it up on top of the wagon. See the row of hay that get down there and hook the wagon to it and drive down the row and one guy drives the team, another guy gets there with it. There's the mowing machine that cuts the, that cuts the, uh, hay about seven foot at a time. And you have to take those mowing machines out and sharpen them about every Three, two, three days on the old grindstone. Now, now we're back to the old, the first tractor. Here comes the old Oliver tractor and Don's cultivating sugar beets with a tractor. That tire looks like it's going in reverse, but it does go the right direction. That was the first tractor on the farm, back in the early 40s. Now we're coming to the wheat harvest. There's the wheat. We're going to thrash. There's the threshing, clearing the bundles on the wagon. Here comes the neighbors with their wagons to help uh, haul the grain to the threshing rig. They're all waiting for the threshing rig to come. They're going out in the field. Here comes Bill Lesh and his old threshing rig. Notice as they go through here, all the farmers go to work. There they go. They're ready to, they're ready to, uh, be going around the barn so they can set up, get the straw, make a straw stack out the south side of the barn. Some different than the $50,000 tractors today, you'll notice. A tractor like that probably costs about four or five hundred. Yeah. Here comes the first load of 
grain to be thrown on the on the machine. Notice they're all hooked up, the old belt's running, and the old machine is running ready to go. There. There's the, there's the old blower. Yeah, that guy, I think that's Randy Kowak. I would drive him that. Now it takes two of them. Two of them throw the bundles on the, uh, on the, uh, platform and they go, on, they go in there head first, heads up to the front. There's Dad's truck, uh, haul the grain away over to the granary. There's, that's a guy tending bagger. Oh, there goes my dad. See, that was the old dog always on the job. Here comes the straw out back there. See how they lift that's a bushel and a half in those bags. That's ninety pounds. There's Doris and John. And that's Riney Quark up in front. There's my dad supervising things. All right, one leg and road's done. All away they go. Oh, Louis Felsky's having trouble with his pants. There they go after another load. See, there's two more waiting. They don't sit around and wait for things to happen. They're right there. See, three loads all waiting there to be unloaded. They probably have four or five teams out there bringing. Now, here's old, notice the, the old horse needs some encouragement. There's old Bill Barr per poking on the rear with his, with his, uh, fork. That's Joyce Hepper's father. That's Fred Feltsky, the guy up to the north. He's does the, he's spreads the straw around, what we call stacks the straw. That's a nice clean job. All that chaff is down your neck and down your, in your side of your clothes. Now, that's the airplane of the day. There's old Bill Lesh. He lived over on Clark Road, over near Airport Road, corner airport. And see how they throw those up? I used to be up on top spreading them around. If you don't put them up on the right, they slide off. Now we're coming to the first combine over on Clarence Barley's farm across from the church, the Methodist church. Old Ziski, Mr. Ziski, uh, owned that. But he was doing a little custom work for Clarence Barley. Notice they didn't have very, there's Clarence Barley. And, uh, there's the wagon they put the grain in. The old Ford tractor. Here's my dad and all the horses. There's the old chicken coop. See, they're pretty good horses. A little bit big to ride. Yeah, that's John. That's one of the maids we had. We had a maid at those, well, back in those days. Marjorie worked in the office part time. Oh boy, the cow's got an itch. There's the watering tank. They come up and get a drink. Of course, that's kept from freezing in the winter with a, with a coal fired a uh, tank heater sits down in the water and warms the water so it don't freeze. <laughs>